You need to stop competing at the daily wad at your gym. What's up team, Michael here, and in this video, I'm gonna be telling you why you need to stop competing in the daily CrossFit wad at your gym. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, you're thinking I'm absolutely crazy, but just hang in there because in this video, I'm gonna explain. Also, I'm gonna be giving you an example of how Rich Froning, the four-time fittest man on earth and one of the most competitive people in CrossFit, altered his training style, his own personal training style, because of what we're gonna talk about in this video. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Michael Groff and my channel is all about helping new crossfitters get fitter, faster, and stronger. So if that interests you, consider joining the team by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. But if you're already a part of the team, thanks so much for watching another video. A few weeks ago, I did a video about three podcasts you should listen to if you do CrossFit. And one of those podcasts was the Chasing Excellence podcast by Coach Ben Bergeron. And there's an episode on the Chasing Excellence podcast that I think every single CrossFitter should listen to regarding of their skill level. So after you're done watching this video, if you still have time, I'd suggest you go over to the Chasing Excellence YouTube channel and watching episode 16. I'll link to it in the description below. But in that episode, Coach Ben Bertrand goes over how to train with intention in the gym. And one of the things he covers in that video on how to do that is to stop competing in every single wad at your gym. But before we get into that and why you shouldn't be competing in every single wad at your CrossFit gym, you first need to know the differences between practicing, training, and competing in the gym. Here's a short clip of episode 16 on the Chasing Excellence podcast where Ben Bergeron explains the differences between the three. Practice is done with low heart rates. It's done with low loads, under 60%, with the goal of improving your movements. Training is done with heavy weights, high heart rates. It's what we normally think of when we think of CrossFit. And the goal is to improve your engine or your strength. Mm -hmm. Competition is done with max loads, max effort, and the goal is to beat somebody else. So keeping what Ben Bergeron just said in mind, I have a question for you. How much are you currently competing versus training and practicing? Comment below because I'm really curious to what your answer is. But a lot of CrossFitters, myself included, up until a few months ago when I changed some things up in my training program, compete every single day in the daily wad that is on the board at our CrossFit gym and we don't spend as much time training, let alone practicing. In fact, let me paint a quick picture for you. Say you go into your CrossFit gym to do the daily wad, you're around all your CrossFit buddies and you're having a great time, you're taunting each other on who is gonna have the best score or whose score you're gonna beat. Then you start to do the wad and you end up trying to do everything possible to get a better score or to beat someone else. While that is definitely fun and is okay to do sometimes, you shouldn't be doing that every single day. And I know a lot of CrossFitters, myself included, absolutely love and crave the competition that comes with CrossFit. But the truth is, if you wanna get as fit as you can and in the best shape that you possibly can get in, then you need to decrease how much you compete and increase how much you train and even more importantly, how much you practice. And in case you're wondering, I'm not just randomly telling you this, there's actually a very important reason to why you shouldn't be competing in the daily wad every single day, and that is because you can actually compete yourself out of shape. A few reasons on how you can actually compete yourself out of shape is for one, competing puts so much stress on your body and if you are competing every single day, you will actually get less fit instead of getting fitter. And another reason is when you're competing, your natural tendency is trying to do everything as fast as you can and this a lot of times lead to you using bad form. So for example, say you can do cleans faster by using bad form and not getting good solid hip contact with the bar. If you are gonna throw down in the daily wad and you're trying to get a better score than the friend beside you, what are you gonna do when that wad starts? Are you gonna do cleans with good form and be a little bit slower? Or are you gonna do the cleans as fast as possible and resort back to bad technique? The answer is really simple. If you are trying to beat someone beside you, you will use the way that is fastest and that is not a good way to train. This is partly why you see some crossfitters, they've been doing crossfit for years but still cannot do things like double unders. It's because they're competing too much and not practicing those movements enough. And in fact, this actually leads us to our next point where a lot of CrossFitters think you practice movements in the wad. But in fact, that is just not the case. If you are really, really bad at a movement or don't even know how to do it at all, 
the last thing you want to do is throw it into a wad. Not only will you get really frustrated at not being able to do the movement because for one, you're under fatigue from doing the wad, but second, you actually run a higher risk of getting injured, especially if you're doing high technique movements like the clean and jerk or the snatch. Now, before we get into this last portion of the video, I just want to quick clarify, I am not saying that you should never compete in your gym's daily wad. There's definitely a time for that. However, a lot of us have the ratios on when to practice, train and compete all messed up. Sometimes we're competing when we think we're training and sometimes we're training when we should actually be practicing. That actually leads us to a question that you may be asking yourself and that is how do you know when to practice, train and compete? Well, first we have to determine if you are working out on your own time or just doing the daily wad at your CrossFit gym. If you're working out on your own time, your daily workout sessions should predominantly be dedicated to training and practicing. For example, in my AM training sessions, I usually start with a full warm up and then I start practicing some light gymnastic movements and then I start going into my heavy training session, which usually include high intensity workouts or weight that is around 50 to 95% of my one rep maxes. However, if you are just doing the daily wad at your gym, your gym should be helping you with many practice sessions and training sessions before the wad actually starts. In fact, Ben Bergeron on episode 16 of the Chasing Excellence podcast actually explains this really well. Let's see what he says. Our classes are not, here's the workout, why don't you guys get warmed up and we're going to start this in three minutes and then we give a three, two, one, go. Our classes are very much, let's go through these movements with an empty barbell for upwards of 30 reps and break it down piece by piece with a the progression. There's your practice. Very low heart rate, very focused work, very diligent. Let's move better, mm -hmm. right? Then from there, we'll add in some training where we'll actually do fake practice rounds of the workout. So now we know how to practice and train, but what about competing? Well, I personally choose one day a week. It's usually Saturday where I do a wad with some guys and all we're doing is focusing on just competing with each other and how to get the fastest score possible. In that wad, I'm not trying to train or practice a specific movement. The whole point of that wad is to compete and go as hard as I possibly can. And it actually depends on how often you should compete based on what your fitness goals are. For example, an elite athlete only competes a few times a year, but for the majority of people, Ben Bergeron suggests that you should throw down no more than once a week. And in fact, once you start to compete less and train and practice more, you will see your progress shoot through the roof. I guarantee it. And if you're someone who seems to be getting injured all the time, it might be a sign that you're competing way too much and to fix that, just dial down how much you compete. Now at the beginning of this video, I said I was gonna be giving you an example of how Rich Froning, the four time fittest man on earth and one of the most competitive people in CrossFit, altered his own personal training style because of what we just covered in this video. Um, it's where a lot of EMOMs can come in place. EMOMs by definition, the reason those became popular, they became popular, popularized by Rich Froning mm -hmm. who'd made tremendous gains because he realized that I don't need to compete every single time I go to work out. Yeah. I can train. Imams by definition are training. If Rich Froning of all people saw that it was important to compete less and train and practice more, then me and you definitely need to be doing the exact same thing. Now this video was actually fairly short compared to the Chasing Excellence episode that I based this video off of. So if you have time, I'd highly suggest that you go watch episode 16 on the Chasing Excellence podcast entitled How to Train with Intention. It should be on the screen right now. Also, if you haven't heard, I have a free workout recovery checklist that will give you some great tips on how to recover better. You can find links to that and other helpful videos in the description below. But until next time, train hard team and I'll see you later.